So when people ask me, Mario, what do you use to study? I simply answer back, Anki. That's it? Yeah, basically. Hi, my name is Mario and I am a 17-year-old international A-level student from Spain. Although that intro might seem like an ad, this video is definitely not sponsored by Anki. So if I'm telling you that Anki is a game changer, it is only because he has personally helped me in achieving better grades while dedicating less time to studying and also making the process more enjoyable. In this video, I'm not going to show you how to use Anki. I will just be walking you through my uh, personal Anki and I will be telling you why I use it as my main method of studying. However, if you want to learn how to use Anki in detail at its full potential, then I just released a Skillshare class on Anki for students, which is one hour and 30 minutes long. So. Uh, it is quite long. Anki is a free digital flashcard software that you can use to prepare for your exams. The effective use of flashcards for studying have been demonstrated to have a high effectiveness when it comes to getting a good grade. Hi, my name is Mario and welcome to my Skillshare class on Anki for students. Everything that you're going to be seeing in this video has already been covered in that class, but more on that later on. So back to the video, how do I use Anki as a student? So first, for those that don't yet know what Anki is, uh, I'm going to be showing you around my Anki so that you see all the different sections and how they look and how they more or less work uh, at a quick glance. And then I will let you know what I personally do in order to incorporate Anki into my student life, into my studying for my A-level exams. So we are right now inside of Anki so that we can do a quick walkthrough. So the first thing that you see in here is the deck section. As you can see, uh, this is what appears when you first open the app. A deck is basically a folder for storing and uh, categorizing your flashcards. So I have, as you can see, a few over here uh, right now for my A2 content, for my A-level, uh, year 13 A2 content, I have one in which I have loads inside. I have chemistry, physics, further mathematics, uh, and maths. But so that you can quickly see how decks work, you can uh, contract, and expand so that it can be uh, you know seen in different ways and so that it is more neat uh, if you want to contract it all and then inside a2 chemistry i also have some sub decks so you can see in here i have unit 4 unit 5 uh, and i have a few flashcards in here actually so right now for example this is going to click into unit 4 uh, so you can see over there and we have many different sub decks. And you can see on the sides, uh, the status of the flashcards, whether they are uh, recently added, so they are new, or you are revising them, or they are due to revise. But in here, you can see that I have my final decks where I have my flashcards categorized. So for example, organic chemistry, carbonyls, carboxylic acids, and chirality. Let's just go and click and see that. And we can see here, you know, the status. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go and study now. And you would see the first flashcard. What is optical isomerism? This is a random flashcard out of all the flashcards that I have. That's one of the coolest features that Anki has. It is that it shows you flashcards in a random way, uh, which is the best way to study actually. So right now, yeah, what is optical isomerism? Well, basically when you have two enantiomers, which basically are isomers in the way that they are uh, symmetric to each other. So uh, yeah, I think that's basically it. So we can just go and check it out. And you can see, I even mentioned the chiral center, two different yet symmetric versions. I said that uh, they are known as enantiomers. Uh, so yeah, basically that's the way it works. And then you would click any of these options. Again, hard, good, or easy, depending on how it went. I'm just gonna go and say good because I even mentioned the chiral center. So just go and click uh, good in here. And that will be it. And then we will have the next flashcard. So you can see more or less how it works. Then we can just go and contract all these. And down here, you can see that we have what's called the review heat map, which basically is a calendar that shows you the amount of revision that you get done. This is another one, but I'm not going to talk to you about it because it will make the video too excessively long. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, basically it's a calendar that shows you the amount of revision that you get done. Uh, so basically that's it. Uh, the amount of flashcards that you get done every single day. Uh, 60 over here. Nice. So yeah, that's basically it for the decks section, which is basically the main page. And then this is going to the add section, which is basically where you would be adding your flashcards. So let's just go click into that. And as you can see in here, uh, it is simple. You have the type of flashcard. Let's just leave it at basic. Then that deck that you want to send the flashcard to. So you can choose from all of your decks. And then you have the front and the back of your flashcard. Let's just say we write hello in here. 
Then at the back in here, I'm just gonna go and add some mathematical notation. So I'll just go and hit the math jax block. Uh, and as you can see in here, uh, we can just go and write something. So ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, and you can go and preview it when you hit cards, uh, back preview. And you can see this is how it looks. You can even make it bigger if you go and use this thing, huge, uh, opens, closes, and you can just go into cards, back preview, and you will have it huge. This is a good trick, uh, but there's so much to do in here, so I'm just showing you a bit around. Uh, so you can see the possibilities of writing text, of writing mathematical notation. So yeah, that will basically be it for the add section. You would just need to hit add and it will be added to any deck that you have previously selected. Now let's just go into the browse section. And as you can see in here, we have all the flashcards to search for them. Uh, we can filter them. We can uh, see them by uh, importance, by card state, by uh, the decks by the different decks is a pretty good way of finding our flashcards once we have already created them and being able to uh, edit them so you maybe made a mistake and want to uh, change something that you can go and just change it so that the flashcard is now correct and you know legit so um yeah so that is basically it for the browse section uh there are more things obviously but i'm just not gonna go through it in this video because it is not really worth it i think uh so let's just go back and the last section that we have to explore is the stats section, which basically gives you statistics about your use of the app. So you can see loads of things in here, uh, card counts, uh, the state of your flashcards, review intervals. This is just interesting if you want to uh, check how you're doing and how the different cards are being processed. So it is a pretty cool thing to know about. So that is the minimum that you need to know in order to move yourselves around the app. However, there's so much more to it than what you have just seen, such as Anki settings, writing, mathematical and chemical notation, getting to know about add-ons, uh, syncing to Anki web, and then other more practical aspects such as how to make good flashcards or how to incorporate Anki into your BC student life. So videos on all those aspects of Anki are available inside my Skillshare class, which you can access for free uh, for one month using the link in the description down below. But putting that to aside, I'm now going to talk to you about my experience while using it. I have to say that although it has helped me when preparing for exams, I am not the most consistent person uh, while using it. I am not the most consistent person when it comes to revision. During exam season, I take my Anki revision really seriously. Before going to sleep, I will be doing some Anki flashcards to end the day at the highest and tomorrow morning I will also be revising some Anki flashcards. I did quite a lot of them. I'm just gonna go and see how many I did. I did 60 flashcards reviewed uh, today. But when I am not in exam season, I usually just leave it for later on, to be honest. So yeah. So consistency is the thing that I personally need to work on and it is the only thing that Anki doesn't already do for you. It already does the work of selecting your cards and make sure that your revision is as optimized as possible. However, it doesn't have the ability to take you out of bed and force you to go through your flashcards. Um, so yeah, I'm still waiting for that update. Now, when it comes to adding flashcards, I usually do that on the weekends and I try to add images, whether it be to just make it more visual or to be able to have detailed explanations and working outs for the back side of the flashcards. Adding visual content to your flashcards does make the difference when it comes to understanding and retaining concepts in a more effective but yet appealing way. So that has been a brief tour around my Anki and my experience while using it. As mentioned, go check out my brand new Skillshare class on Anki for students studying with digital flashcards. I have put so many hours and worked so hard for this class during the past month, so I truly hope that those of you that do give it a chance are able to benefit from it. So I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and I don't really have anything else to say. Remember, link in the description for that. I hope that you guys found this video helpful or useful uh, in whichever way possible. Uh, if so, do make sure to leave a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe, we are getting close to 1K, so I'm really excited for that. So I will see you guys in the next video, which is coming next week. Uh, because right now I am quarantined, by the time that I'm filming this, I am quarantined because I tested positive, uh, you know, so I'm here quarantined. Uh, so I decided to make a blog about it. So that is coming out next week. So stay tuned. And yeah, I have nothing else to say. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.